Howdy y'all, Mr. Kazi here coming to you from my virtual studios in beautiful Atascacita, Texas. And I have another lesson for you in thermodynamics. In this lesson, you are going to learn about chemical thermodynamics, energy, enthalpy, entropy, and much, much more. Chemical thermodynamics is the study of energy or the transfer of energy in physical and chemical changes. Every time there's a physical change or a chemical change, there has been some kind of energy change. Either energy has been released or energy has been absorbed, but there's a change in energy. And it either goes from the system into the surroundings or from the surroundings into the system. And three questions we need to ask when we're thinking about uh, chemical thermodynamics. And that is, uh, what is energy, what is the system, and what are the surroundings? So let's define those. Energy is the ability to move or change something. And I know a lot of times you have been told energy is the ability to do work. That's not a very good uh, definition. What you really need to remember is that energy is going to be the ability to move something or change something. And there are two types, potential energy, which is stored energy, and there is kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, and something has happened. And uh, internal energy is the sum of all the possible forms of energy in a system. That's the energy in the system, and energy or internal energy cannot be measured. All we can do is possibly measure the changes in energy. So there's atoms, ions, and molecules that are all in the system and they all possess internal energy. The internal energy is independent of the pathway used to reach that state. So what is a state function? A state function is a property dependent only on the state of the system. What uh, condition is that system in and not the pathway? things like pressure and temperature. So let's define the system. The system is whatever is being observed. And then the surroundings is everything else. Exothermic energy is heat transferred from the system to the surroundings. So the system gives off this energy and it will feel hot. Now we have endothermic, and that is heat transferred from the surroundings to the system. And when something uh, like that occurs, then it's going to feel cold. So hot and cold, uh, these feelings are on whether or not energy is being put into the system or energy is being taken out of the system. Either way, it's a change in energy. Now heat, represented by the symbol Q, is the transfer of energy measured in calories or joules. And a calorie is the heat needed to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. And that's not to be confused with the food calorie. The food calorie is 1,000 calories or a kilocalorie. The real calorie is the heat needed to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. And then a joule is the SI unit for energy and there are 4.18 joules per calorie. Work. Now work is the ability to move or change matter. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? It's very familiar or very similar to energy. And it takes energy to do work. And work can't happen without energy. But work has not occurred if something doesn't move or change. And work done on a system is positive. And work done by the system is negative. When the system affects the surrounding, that's negative, And usually energy is leaving the system, it's exothermic. When work is done on the system by the surroundings, that's endothermic and uh, work is positive. And so the change there is the sum of the heat and the work of a system. And we can calculate that or use this equation. Let's look at an example. During a certain process, 45.0 joules of heat 
was added to a system and the system did 155 grams of work on its surroundings. So what was the energy change for the system? Well, let's go to the whiteboard. We know that the change in energy is the work plus the heat and heat is 45.0 joules and work is negative 155 or 155 joules. So do the math and we get negative 110 joules and that is a net loss of energy to the surroundings. So it is exothermic. Now another thing that we need to understand is enthalpy. And enthalpy is the heat content of a system. So you look at your system or your reactants and the heat content, the heat that's in them is called enthalpy. And the change of enthalpy equals the change in energy plus the change in pressure times volume. And in liquids and solids, the volume is pretty negligible. And really it only affects gases. Therefore, we can usually consider the change or the enthalpy as equal to the change in energy. It comes in handy when calculating enthalpy. So the change in enthalpy, the products have more energy than the reactants, the change is positive. So we have an uh, endothermic uh, reaction. If the products have less energy than the reactants, the change is negative, such as um, an explosion or a very hot reaction. Uh, energy is going to have been released. And so we have negative enthalpy, which is exothermic. Now, the next thing we need to understand is entropy. And that is the measure of disorder in a system. And the second law of thermodynamics says that entropy is always increasing, which means we're always going more to disorder and not towards order. But both are occurring. Negative entropy and positive entropy are both occurring. Positive entropy, of course, would be more disorder, such as uh, melting or uh, burning something. That is going to be disorder, the falling apart of something. And negative entropy would be order, which is less disorder. And that would be something like freezing. Freezing uh, creates an order of the molecules, uh, the water molecules or the substance that's freezing becomes more orderly therefore less disorder and that's negative entropy. All right, let's recap. Chemical thermodynamics, we looked at energy, we looked at exothermic and endothermic. We then looked at uh, the change in energy, which is just the sum of the heat and the work, and enthalpy, which is the energy content in a system. And we're gonna look at some problems like that in future lessons dealing with calculations, uh, enthalpy or the heat of vaporization and things of that nature. And then there's entropy, which of course is going to disorder and positive entropy falling apart, negative entropy uh, coming together and becoming orderly and structured. If you have any questions, shoot off an email to Mr. Causey at mrcausey.com and check out my mrcauseysworld.com. There's also mrkazi.com and you can check out PowerPoint videos and if you want uh, regular videos, go and join my YouTube channel. Happy ions, everybody.